these are all also equal to one meter in length. So you can see how they're organized here. They're all equivalent to one meter. These are some examples that I would like you to try for homework, and then in class we are going to go through the answers together. Next unit is temperature. So temperature, uh, the international unit is the Kelvin. However, we probably haven't measured in Kelvin temperature very frequently. Now, the reason why we use the Kelvin scale is that there are no negative temperatures. When we have zero Kelvin, that is called absolute zero. It is the lowest possible temperature, and this represents the point at which all matter would stop moving, it would, it would stop vibrating. So there is, um, since temperature represents average kinetic energy, kinetic energy relates to movement, this is zero movement. Now what you need to know is a conversion from Celsius to Kelvin. If you want to convert to Kelvin, you would take your Celsius temperature and add 273. If you need to find the temperature in Celsius, you would subtract 273, 273 from the Kelvin temperature. So here are our two scales. Here we have the Kelvin scale. Here we have the Celsius scale. So absolute zero is down here at zero Kelvin. That would be equivalent to negative 273. And by the way, there, there are two digits behind the decimal there as well. Typically we don't, or typically I don't use them, but that's what they would be. One five are the next two digits. Now the temperature at the freezing point of water, you might know that the freezing point of water is zero degrees Celsius. That freezing point in Kelvin is 273 Kelvin. That's for the freezing point of water. And then, of course, it would go up. Um, room temperature is around 20 degrees Celsius. And that's around 293 Kelvin. So let's do these two examples. If we know that the Celsius temperature is 300 Kelvin, what is that in Celsius? So if we look at here, 300, we know it's going to be somewhere between 20 and 30. So you would subtract 273 from this value, and what would that give you? That would give you 27 degrees Celsius. If you know that it's uh, 75 Celsius, so it'll be way up here, somewhere around 75, it would be around 350 or so, so we would add 273. 348 Kelvin. So the temperature conversions are really easy. Now, derived units are a combination of units. In purple, I'm showing you the formula for this unit. In red will be the unit. So density is a, um, a unit that we use to describe the mass per volume. So typically, it's in grams for the mass. The volume is typically measured in milliliters. Volume itself is a derived unit also. You can find the volume, let's say, of a cube if you measure the length, the width, and the height of that cube, and then multiply them. That might be measured in cell, uh, centimeters, and then it will be centimeters cubed would be your unit. Now a rate. A rate is distance over time. Distance measured perhaps in meters, time in seconds. These are all derived units. It's a combination of units. Now for density, we um, just looked at a slide that says that density was the mass over the volume. So it says calculate the density of a piece of metal with a mass of 13.5 grams, so this is mass over volume, 13.5 grams divided by our volume, which is 5.20 milliliters. Okay, well my calculator here. Our answer is 2.596 two grams per milliliter. We're going to talk about how to round these numbers also. Again, we're looking for something to do with density. It says we want to find the mass. We don't know the mass. The density is 0 0.750 grams per milliliter and the volume is 400 milliliters. Now how do you find the mass? We know that density, if you look up in this corner, is mass over volume. I just want the volume, or I'm sorry, I just want to know mass. So mass is going to be density times the volume. Look at our units here. Density is 0 0.750 grams per milliliter. I'm going to multiply that by the volume, 400. And look at the milliliters cancels out. 
0.75 times 400, uh, it's going to be 300 um, grams is our final answer there. Now a couple other things to look at in measurement. Some measurements are accurate, some measurements are precise, some measurements have both accuracy and precision. We're going to discuss this. So being uh, an accurate measurement is one that is close to the true value. Okay, so this is accuracy. Precise is that we have multiple measurements that are close together. So this is where we have several measurements. All right, so here we have dart boards. How do dart boards represent measurements? So you know that in darts, the goal is to hit the bullseye. So hitting the bullseye is like being close to the true value. We'll write that here, bullseye. And here, um, this is like if we hit the bullseye many times. So which of these, A, B, or C, is the most accurate? Well, it looks like C is very accurate. Notice that it hit that bullseye right there, that's great. And notice that each dart is all very close to the bullseye. So it's also precise because it's repeated. Now is this accurate? Does it hit the bullseye? Not at all. So this is not accurate. What about precise? Do we repeat the same spot again and again? No, it's not precise either. Not very good skill here. Now this one, we're not getting the bullseye, so it is not accurate. Do we repeat the same location again and again? Yes, they're all in the same spot or near the same spot. So it is precise. So it is precise. So it gives you an idea about accuracy versus precision. Now with measurements, if we're comparing um, four thermometers. We have thermometer one, two, three, and four. We're going to look at their four readings. This is of boiling water. Now, what is boiling water supposed to be? It's supposed to be exactly 100 degrees Celsius at standard conditions. So let's look at these four. Um, the average for thermometer one is 100. So which is accurate? Thermometer one is accurate. Is it precise? Well, 99.9. .9, there, there's a very small range here. They're all repeated. The range is only 0.2. So yes, temp, uh, thermometer one is both accurate and precise. Thermometer two, look at the average. Okay, so accuracy looks at the average. It has a pretty good average. Is it precise? Are they all close together? No, they are not. So um, it is not precise. Temperature, or th sorry, thermometer number three, is it close? to the true value, 98.5, no, it is not accurate. Is it precise? Small range, yes, it is precise. It has a very small range. Thermometer four, we look at the um, average, ooh, that's not accurate. And the range, it's not very precise, so it's not accurate nor precise. So thermometers one and two are close to 100 on average. And here the range is small. That tells us if it is precise. Uh, thermometers one and four are the most, um, oh, that's not right. One and three, fix that. One and three are the most precise. And um, I probably then use thermometer one is probably the best thermometer to use. I would probably throw away thermometer four because it's neither accurate nor precise. Uncertainty measurement. So now let's say that we have three people, Al, Bob, and Cece. They're all measuring the same liquid. They're transferring it from container to container. Let's assume that all that liquid is transferred so there's, there's no um, additional variable to consider there. Now Al measures it at 123.873. Bob, you can see his measurement, and Cece. Now he has more digits. Why does he have so many more digits than let's say Cece does? She only has three digits that are recorded. How can this discrepancy be explained? That's what we're looking at next. Now in measurement, we um, record each digit that we know and we estimate one. Let me show you what I mean by this. Here is a device that is measuring liquid and this is measured in milliliters. So 
The liquid that we're looking at, we're going to measure the bottom of the meniscus, which the meniscus is here. Notice how it curves up a little bit. Water does this. We always read the bottom. Now if you look at these measurements, if we look very close, we can see that here we have 10 and 15. We know it's between 10 and 15. And the other measurements that are marked are the ones place. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we know it's, um, let's see, this is 11, 12, 13. It's around 13 milliliters, and I believe that it's right on that line. So 13, I know that it's 13, and I think it's exactly 13, and so this is how I, rem I measure it. Now, these were known digits. These digits were known. This digit right here, I estimated. Okay, so we record each known digit, one and the three. We estimate one digit, which I estimated the zero. And all of the numbers I've just recorded are called significant digits. We'll talk more about that. Okay, so here we have a length measurement. Let's say that this is being measured in centimeters. Which measurements are shown? Which ones are marked? So I know it's between six and seven for sure, getting a little bit closer between here and here. So I know that it's somewhere between, let's see, 6.123, 6.3, and 6.4, because those are known. Where is it in between there? I think it's pretty close to the middle. So I'm going to say 6.3, and then this next, next digit I am estimating, I think that it is a 6. Now, do you agree with me? Do you think that that is a 6, or do you think that it's maybe a 5? That last digit that's estimated, it can be different for each of us. That's up to me when I'm making the measurement. It's up to you when you make the measurement. Let's try a couple more examples. So we know it's between 10 and 11. Okay, so 10 is here and 11 is here. And these are a little bit different where I'm measuring how much has... Um, being dispensed. This is using this kind of a device called a burette. So here this would be 10.2, um, 0.4, 0.6, 0.7, 0 0.8. So it's between 10.4 and 10.6. I think it's right in between and so it's 10.5. This is my estimated digit and so I'll stop with one estimated digit. I don't guess more than one. This example, uh, we can see it's um, zoomed in here. So the 20 is marked here, and then below this would be 21 somewhere down here. And here we are marking the tenths place. So this would be 20.1, this would be 0.2, and so forth. I think it's between 20.1 and 20.2. So I'm going to guess now notice that there's no digits that I'm skipping here. Did you recall that this was 0.4 and 0.6? So the 5 was a guess. But I know for sure that it's 20.1, but 20.14 is my estimated digit, and I'm going to say this is also milliliters. So that last digit is the one that I estimated. The 1 right here, I knew the 4 was estimated.